Thank you for tuning in to an episode of In Range, coming to you today from the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic slash apocalypse. And this seems like a wonderful time to talk to you about the concept of survival rations, because as Napoleon said, and I'm going to paraphrase him, an army moves on its stomach. The reality is none of us can function without proper sustenance. And the idea of fulfilling and feeding your army, your military on the move, especially when moving quickly and fast, maybe say something called a blitzkrieg, the idea of having mobile food with each soldier makes a lot of sense. That happens, and you see it in the U.S. Civil War, you see it in the Franco-Prussian War, World War I, World War II, going up into today. And every individual country and military came up with different ways to attempt to solve that problem. The one I want to talk to you today is a couple of them that are actually still available on the market, and this is why this is pertinent to now. This kind of stuff, while maybe isn't necessarily directly used in military rations today, still make a lot of a sense for a civilian if they have a need or concern about having extra food and rations around for them for unexpected circumstances or disasters. The COVID-19 one is a very ex a great example of that, unfortunately. So what I want to talk to you today is a couple different things. First, I'm going to talk to you about this field stove. Still readily available on the market, not hard to find, the Esbit stove. Esbit stove was invented because of this little solid fuel tablet that was invented by Erich Schum in 1936. And this became the standard World War II German field kitchen cook stove that a soldier would keep in his pack if he was separated from the standard field kitchen. This little fuel tablet and this little piece of foldable stamped sheet metal allowed you to cook in the field with your standard little canteen cooking set here. And we're going to do that later in the video. You can still buy these today with these solid fuel tablets. They don't really go bad and they kind of work forever. So uh, it's interesting that if you look at the Esbit site, they don't talk a lot about their World War II interaction, but this is absolutely a World War II style stove, but of modern manufacture. They're functionally identical in every possible way. This right here is just hard tack. It's a, this is now in a World War I German type wrapper for coolness on the video, but this stuff is accessible and available anywhere. You can get these types of Germanic, Scandinavian, Northern European hard bread anywhere. And this is another thing that pretty much stores kind of forever. During the US Civil War, hard tack was the answer for both the Union and Confederate militaries as they were moving. And that gave them something that while it wasn't necessarily delicious, it was something that kept them alive in the field. And kind of the star of the show today is this, Herbsverst. Thank you, Apocalypse Gnome, for holding that for me. Herbsverst was invented in 1867 by Heinrich Gruenberg, and this is essentially a dried pellet of pea soup mixed in with bacon fat and bacon. They come in green and yellow. This is the modern incarnation of it right here, um, but it's made by the same company. Well, initially, it was made for the Franco-Prussian War, and 1,200 people were employed at a factory, and they made 5,000 tons of this during the Franco-Prussian War. But in 1899, the German company Knorr, Knorr bought it, and they continue to make it today on the commercial and civilian market. This continued to be issued as a ration for the Prussian army, but then also World War I military, German army, and the World War II German army. Um, soldiers would keep two of these in their bag, two of these in their bag, some bacon, some coffee, some tea, some sugar and salt, and that was one of the forms of quote-unquote iron rations that kept them capable of moving in the field if they were separated from their standard field kitchen. So if you had this, you had some of this hard bread, hard tack, you had your Esbit stove, you could make yourself a meal pretty much anywhere you were. Another thing about this is the way this is prepared and manufactured, it kind of goes and stays forever. It's hard to find on the American market, unfortunately. You have to kind of order it internationally. I happen to have a lot of it. This stuff expired according to its uh, instructions in 2018, but it doesn't matter. It absolutely kind of stores perpetually forever. So let's go ahead and go through the process here of what it is to make a little bit of serving here of herbs worst. We're going to have some pea soup and we're going to have some hard bread because it's lunchtime here during the apocalypse here in Arizona. And so what I'm going to do first is I've got eight ounces of water in my little field cooking kit here, and I'm going to light my Esbit stove to get some fire because we need hot water to do this. You may not be able to see that on the camera, but that little hard fuel ta tablet is absolutely burning wonderfully already. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is put my water on top of that and we wanna get this going. And while that's cooking, let's go ahead and get going on the actual herbs first. So this has a little wrapper on it, so we'll open our pocket knife. And 
and it's a little dry as you see because it's a little bit out of date and it doesn't freaking matter at all but these come out as tablets each of these tablets is one serving and this is 135 grams which would have been one of the two packages that a soldier would have kept in their pack in the field so you take your tablet and you put it in your other element here and what I have found you can do it without crushing it but I have found that it's much better to smash this thing to make it a powder before you add the hot water. Trying to melt the tablet is a lot more difficult than melting and making the powder. So I'm just crushing this with my knife. And as you can see now, we now have powder, one powdered tablet of herbs first in this little bowl. So what we're gonna do is wait for that water to start getting hot. But while we're at it, let's go ahead and open up our hardtack. really nothing more than like a hard bread cracker. This is not hard to find. You can find this all over the place. Um, pretty much any standard market in the European section will have some sort of European style hard bread. But we'll set this to the side as well. And we're looking at our water here. It's not quite there yet. As it does get hot really quick, but it doesn't immediately cook. And so these tablets as a field solution for cooking food or water um, are superb in that regard and in some ways quite a bit superior to types of liquid fuel canisters that you can keep with you. They're small, you can put a lot of them in a bag and as you can see they burn very hot and very well and this water is already boiling, already boiling. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take this um, and we're going to go ahead and mix the water into our herbs worst. Eight ounces of water by the way. In theory, I could blow out that tablet. Let's see if we can do it. It's kind of hard to do. <sighs> yep. With enough of a blow, you can get it out, and I can maybe save that tablet for later. But now we've got our pellet in here, and we're going to just stir. You can see it already melted. There's a little black thing in my soup. During the apocalypse, we don't care about that anymore. We just kind of knock it out. Thickens up. And we now have... You can choose, you know, the, the, the thickness of your soup. If you use half the water, you'll get a thicker pea soup. But this is, a, this is the recommended amount, eight ounces for one tablet. And at that point, it smells absolutely delicious. And honestly, it is delicious. Herbs Verst is really good. I like the green better than the yellow. I just think it has a better flavor profile. But... For a supposed survival ration, this is really good stuff. Dip your hard cracker in your soup. That is dry. That is what hardtack does. But you soak it in your soup, or your coffee, or your tea. Softens up a little bit. It ain't bad. Anyway, this is great soup. It really is delicious. Um, I would recommend it whether or not you're going through the apocalypse or not. At some point, get yourself some herbs roast and try it out. You get to taste some history. You'll also get to have something around your house that's a survival ration should you need it, but let's not hope that you do. And you also get to um, really have a delicious soup in your house, whether you want it, whether you need to have it right now or not. It's very interesting to me to look back in time and realize that uh, we look at all the future technologies and things that exist in the world and all the things that we're trying to uh, make better. But sometimes going back and looking at the past, such as survival rations of the military, whether it's World War I or World War II, or before that even in regards to something like herbs first and hardtack, a lot of those answers still make sense today. Guys, I hope you like this kind of content, and I hope you're safe and sound going on right now during the COVID-19 apocalypse. Take care of yourselves, make, make rational choices, maintain your social distancing, and I hope that you and your family and friends are safe throughout this event, and that we make through this a better world in the long run. If you like this kind of content, please consider supporting us on Patreon. I know this is a hard time for that. Um, 
and I realize that you may not be able to do that right now, but it is the reason I'm able to do this kind of content for you. Hopefully it gives you a little bit of entertainment and something to think about while you're sitting at home bored or hopefully not sick. Um, if you can't totally get it, just subscribe to the channel. You can find us all over the place. We're on multiple distribution points and you can find them all at inrange.tv. Thank you for watching. Appreciate it very much.